the punjabi folk tale tradition or kissa is a form of poetic narration that was used by many writers across punjab during the 18th and 19th centuries love stories and tragic romances in the classical kissa style gained much popularity in punjab and became part of folklore over time in particular four famous legends heer ranja mirza sahiba sasi punu and soni mahiwal are intrinsic to punjabi culture and were integral to the formation of its literary traditions these tales feature star crossed lovers attempting to fight social structures to pursue their love and suffering tragic fates as a result for centuries these folk tales or kisse were sung and recited by bards and musicians and were widely accessible as they were written in local vernacular languages and were also translated later into persian hindi and english now the story of heer ranja is probably the most famous of the punjabi romances the first kissa of heer ranja was composed by damodar gulati who lived during the reign of the mughal emperor akbar the most well known version of heer ranja was written by the poet varish shah in 1706 and first published in 1851 from the early 19th century numerous manuscripts of varish shah's heer were published in punjabi and urdu the introduction of the lithograph printing press in punjab led to a number of older works being reprinted and the publishing of new books by the 1870s punjabi print culture was thriving and kisse were being composed by scores of people and printed in the thousands so before we go on to our story today it becomes necessary to look back once again at the famous yet tragic love legends of the land through which five rivers gush atop the list remains heer ranja of course interestingly for centuries no one named their daughter heer fearing they would rebel fall in love and meet a sad end Then we have Soni Mahiwal, Mirza Sahiba, and Sasi Punu. The heroines of Punjabi folk tales do not pine away, but rebel against the conventional norms of society and sacrifice everything for love. These folk tales immortalize and enshrine mortal love as the spirit of divine love. The tales also portray a double standard of moral and social convictions and the supremacy of love and loyalty. the protagonists are punished with death for flouting social conventions and disobeying their parents yet their deaths are glorified and offerings are made at their tombs by those who seek blessings and redemption from suffering and unfulfilled desires great love stories that happen in the past become the torch bearer for human kind when faith in the existence of true love would cease so let us then travel to the banks of the rivers in punjab where sufi poets have sung the glory of divine love sasi punnu is today's story for us it is written by shah abdul latif bhitai the famous sindhi and sufi poet from the 16th century sasi was the daughter of the king of bhambur which is in sindh pakistan and its ruins can be seen even today upon sasi's birth Astrologers predicted that she was a curse for the royal family's prestige. The royal family was aghast and insisted that the queen give up the child and better still be done with her by killing her. The queen didn't have the heart to go through with this cruel decree and orchestrated a plan to save her innocent daughter. The child was put in a wooden box and thrown in the river Indus. Such was her fate that the wooden box floated on and on and on till it was spotted by a washerman of the bhambur village who was going about his daily chores he found the wooden box and inside he found the most beautiful baby girl which he was sure was a blessing from god because he was childless he took her home and he named her sasi His family raised Sasi with loving care as she blossomed into an unparalleled beauty. There were songs sung in praise of this hoor with her angelic demeanor. We now move on to her lover Punu who she hasn't yet met. Punu Khan, the son of King Mir Hoth Khan, 
Hoth is a famous Baloch tribe in Makra and Balochistan. Stories of her beauty reached Punu and he became desperate to meet Sasi. The handsome young prince therefore travelled to Bhambur. He sent his clothes to Sasi's father so that he could just get a glimpse of her. When he visited the washerman's house to collect his clothes, he saw Sasi and Sasi saw him. It was fate indeed to fall in love at first sight. Sasi's father was dispirited. He had always hoped that Sasi would marry a washerman and no one else. He asked Punu to prove that he was worthy of Sasi by passing the test as a washerman. Punu agreed to prove his love. While washing, however, he tore all the clothes. As being a prince, he had never washed any clothes on his own. He thus failed the test. But before he returned those clothes, he hid gold coins in the pockets of all of them, hoping that this would convince Sasi's father about his honourable intentions. This move worked and Sasi's father agreed to the marriage. But Punnu's father and brothers were against his marriage to Sasi. After all, Punnu was a prince and she a mere washerman's daughter. And so, for their father's sake, Punnu's brothers travelled to Bhambur to bring back their brother who had gone astray because of this, this Sasi and her looks. First they threatened Punnu, but when he didn't relent, they told him that he had their blessings and attended the wedding. Punu was surprised to see his brother supporting his marriage and on the first night they pretended to enjoy and participate in the marriage celebrations. They forced Punu to drink different types of wines. When he was intoxicated, they carried him on a camel's back and returned to their hometown of Ketch Makran. The next morning, when Sasi realized that she had been cheated, she became mad with grief of separation from her beloved Punu and ran bare feet towards the town of Ketch Makran. To reach it, she had to cross miles of desert. Alone, she continued her journey until her feet were blistered and her lips were parched from crying, Punu, Punu, Punu. The journey was full of dangerous hazards, but Punu's name was on Sasi's lip throughout the journey. She realized she was thirsty on her way when she saw a shepherd coming out of a hut. He gave her some water to drink, but seeing her incredible beauty, dirty, lustful thoughts came to his mind. And he tried to force himself on Sasi. Sasi ran away and prayed to God to hide her. And when God listened to her prayers, land shook and split. And Sasi sank into the ground and was buried in the valley of mountains. Only the tip of her scarf remained above. When Punu was awake, he found himself in Makran. He could not stop himself from running back to Bhambur. On the way, he called out, Sasi, 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 but to no avail. He reached the shepherd's hut and asked him if he had seen his beloved Sasi. Unable to contain his own guilt, the shepherd told Punu the whole story. Punu was distraught at the thought of losing Sasi. Being buried in that ground, he was bereft of all will to live anymore and also made the same prayer to God. The land shook and split again and Punu too was buried in the same mountain valley as his soul mate Sasi. And today their graves lie side by side in Sindh at the spot where they died, united finally in their grief. Shah Abdul Latif Bhitai sings this historical tale in his Sufi poetry as an example of eternal love and union with the divine. He says, Vasan akhni jiye je hund sikhe meen, ta hund rato din bas bundo na kari. O heavens, should you learn something from my eyes? It would rain all day and night. The story of Sasi Punu also appears in Shajo Risalo, written by Bithai, written by Bhitai, and forms part of seven popular tragic romances from Sindh. 
Shah Jo Risalo is a poetic compendium written in Sindhi verse. Bhitai has also hidden his mystical ideas under layers of symbols taken from all spheres of life as well as from the classical Sufi tradition particularly from Rumi's Mathnavi. Risalo is divided into around 30 surs or chapters. Now the word sur is from the Sanskrit word swar and each sur in Risalo is named for its primary subject or after a classical raga. The underlying theme is how the individual is to cultivate godly attributes, negate his ego so as to evolve to a better human being. These surs contain baits which Shah Latif sang in a state of ecstasy. These baits in the surs concerning the life story of his heroines, be it Leela, Mumal, Nuri, Saswi, are not in really chronological sequences for the Sufi poet in his state of vajd or ecstasy was concerned with the moments of denouncements in life stories which he used as allegories to express his mystical experiences. The heroines of Shah Abdul Latif's Bhitai's poetry are known as the seven queens of Sindhi folklore who have been given the status of royalty in the Risalo. They are famous throughout Punjab and Sindh for their positive qualities, honesty, integrity, piety and royalty. They are often valued for their bravery and their willingness to risk their life in the name of love. In his poetry, Shah has alluded in elaborate ways to these characters of Sindhi folktales and used them as metaphors for high spiritual life. Perhaps... What Bhitai saw in his tales of these women was an idealized view of womanhood. But the truth remains that the seven queens inspired women all over Sindh to have the courage to choose love and freedom over tyranny and oppression. The lines from the Risalo describing their trials are sung at Sufi shrines all over Sindh and especially at the Urs of Shah Abdul Latif Bhitai every year at Bhit Shah. It's no wonder then that Punjabi poetry can engulf you with its nuggets about love and its myriad mystical ways. I close today's story with a verse from yet another legend, Bulle Shah, who says, Zahar vek ke pita te ki pita, Ishq soch ke kita te ki kita, Dil de ke dil lene di aas rakhi, Ve bulia pyaar eho jaya kita te ki kita. The essence of these beautiful lines is that one cannot love with expectations that it will be returned with the same depth and fervor. As then, it will be like drinking poison after weighing its potency or falling in love after careful thought. Love demands complete supplication and devotion and defies every thought of oneself. Love just is and i hope you will continue to love folk stories and let them bedazzle you forever aasha hai ki folk stories ka ye safar aapko acha laga on what the folk alvida godspeed sayonara